Sharp Game here, coming at you with another episode from ChooseYourRelationships.com off of Love Can't Wait, which can be found on Amazon.com. And today, I'm going to talk about some of the biggest mistakes that I've seen a lot of guys making. And over the weekend, I went to a, it's kind of like a, a corporate party, and I met a younger guy, and he was asking me all about what I do for a living and, and some of the biggest mistakes I've seen people make just at the party. And, you know, there's a certain um, standard I think every guy or even every woman should maintain at all times. And if you don't have a certain bar or a certain standard, personally for yourself I think um that's where a lot of problems stems from so I'm gonna give you about seven or eight things that I see a lot of guys a lot of mistakes guys make and the first thing is I saw during the party is you got like a lot of guys you got to stop selling yourself on women you know you shouldn't have to be like a salesman you shouldn't have to talk a woman to death and and tell her what you do for a living and what kind of car you drive, the neighborhood you live, uh, how you grew up, the college you went to, uh, the big Ivy League university, the, the job you have, your job position. You shouldn't have to be a spokesperson. If, if you have to sell yourself on people or, or a woman, well, that shows that you lack confidence in yourself there's something about you that you know where it's like you you feel like you go to, you got to go out above and beyond the call of duty just so women can gravitate towards you and you don't got to kiss ass you, you don't got to do all that i mean the best thing you can do is just try to be the best person you can at every given moment and, uh, and if that's not enough for any woman, just keep it moving. That's really it. So you got to stop selling yourself on women. And the second thing you got to stop doing, stop cracking jokes on guys in front of women. And this is a big one, man. The guys are bad when it comes to this. You got guys that they'll pick a guy up or invite a guy, uh, his buddy or his friend or could be his brother over to maybe a woman's house or, or a restaurant or someplace in public where it's like maybe the other women, maybe it's a group of women or, or maybe the other woman has a friend. So what this clown will do is his, his buddy will be the joke of the night or the joke of the evening. So, you know, he does this because he thinks that now, you know, number one, he can get brownie points. And number two, he thinks that that cracking jokes on guys, he thinks that's going to make him be, be become more likable. And the whole shit is really corny. You know, a lot of, I see a lot of guys do it all the time. And then you got some guys who will take it to the next level. Some guys will pick the guy up. And then when the tab comes at the end of the night, he'll push the tab on the guy that he invited. You know, this shit is real, it's real corny when guys do this shit. And some guys, I've seen some guys get, they become like a brand new person in front of women. This shit is real corny, man. You know, cracking jokes and, and then the, these, most women are looking at him like, what the hell is this dude doing? He's, he's you know, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a, really an ass kissing technique. You know, that's what I call it. It's something that a lot of guys placate and try to get brownie points and kiss ass because you know it, it's kind of a weak move you know that that it should you shouldn't have to get that low until you have to demean or make the other person look bad in front of people just so you can feel good about yourself and that way women will like you it's it's soft and weak and it comes across as 
you you you're lacking confidence. You know, so stop cracking jokes on on guys in front of women. And the next thing is guys have too much contact after setting a date with a woman. For example, a guy will set a date maybe two days later, two, three days later. So every day until the date, he'll send texts and call her day and night. See, in his mind, hey, he's like, hey, I got to keep, I, I got to build rapport with her. I got to stay connected so she won't forget about me. And the shit makes you look like a fucking weirdo. Because, I mean, why the hell you got to keep contacting somebody over and over? I mean, what's the big idea behind that? You know, the the woman is looking at, is thinking like this this dude's a fucking weirdo and he doesn't really have a life. If he has to keep texting me day and night and calling me all the way up until the date. And if you're trying to do all that shit before the date, you're not going to have anything else left. You you won't seem mysterious to her. I mean, how much talking and texting are you going to do? And what the hell, how much do you really have to say? But a lot of these guys will do this shit. They, they try to do too much too fast. And that's a mistake. What you should do is make the, make a date, day and time, whatever that is, and call her on that day, probably two, three hours ahead of the time that y'all plan. And that's it, you know, and the day that y'all made, the day that you made the date with her, just say, hey, if anything changes, let me know and I'll, and I'll call you the, the day that y'all have the date set. That's it. But if you got to keep calling and texting her every day until the date is set, that shit is corny and it's weak. You know, I mean, she's going to look at you like you're a fucking weirdo. Like you don't have a life, like you, you, you know, like you don't really have anything else going on in your life because that's too much goddamn time and guys that really have some shit going on, they really don't have time to be calling anybody day and night. You know what I mean? So chill out on the contact. And the next thing is you got to stop showing off in front of, in front of, women just in front of people period you no know, you're flashing your money you you you're turning up your music loud in your car you you know you're flashing your whip you you're, you're showing your rims you you're bragging about what you got you you're talking about where you live at i mean you're showcasing and in front of other people maybe some of these people you grew up with maybe some of the people you went to high school with, or college with, or something like that, you gotta cut that shit out, man. This, this, nobody cares what you got. Nobody really cares where you went to college at. And really, when you start showcasing and showboating and showing off, you really put the woman that's around you really in a, a, a difficult position. Because if she's a, if she wants to be with you just because of what you got, no woman, at least the majority of women anyway, don't want to make it seem like that directly. They want to make, they want to be with you. They want to make it seem like that indirectly. So on top of that, if you're flashing and showing off, what kind of people are you going to have around you anyway? So you're really making it bad on yourself and on the people that you have around you because they don't want to make it seem, they don't want it to seem like they want, they're around you just because of what you got, even though they might be, and you really don't want to have people around you like that anyway, because if something happens to you, they're going to be gone. Whatever you got. And whenever it's gone, they're going to be gone too. So the whole thing 
is is a is a losing game at the end of the day if you really think about it. So knock it off. And the next thing is too many damn compliments. That, that's a big one. Guys, you know they water the the female down compliments. I mean it's okay if you give one or two compliments. Maybe she say, "Hey, I, I like your shoes," or. Or I like your necklace or I like your hair okay that's cool but if you keep saying it over and over again every fucking 20 10 15 20 30 minutes after a while the shit it doesn't sound believable it sounds like you're just being a little simp a little wimp you know what I'm saying if you walk up to a woman and say, hey, you're the most beautiful woman I've ever seen in my life. It could be true to you, but it's not believable. You know what I'm saying? If you make, if you give a woman compliments, it has to be believable to her. The hell with how you feel. <laughs> you can feel the way you feel by your goddamn self. But if you say something to somebody, it has to be believable to them. And it has to be authentic has to be it has to seem genuine so knock off the, the the comments it's once or twice is okay but consistently giving compliments cut that shit out and the next thing is too much money spending in the beginning you know a lot of guys when they meet uh women in the beginning they start start buying shit you know, I mean, they might, they might say, hey, let's go the Capitol Grill, you know, or the, or probably the, the, probably the highest restaurant in the town, wherever they live at, you know, I'm like, why? I mean, and that's the first date too. You know what I'm saying? That's not like the second or the third date. That's the first date. First, you know, why go there? Y'all might not like each other. And you're going to be stuck at the table with somebody that you don't like. I mean, the first date should be someplace that's light, like a bar and grill, because you y'all might not hit it off. And, and the worst place to be is to be stuck at a table with somebody that you want to get the fuck up out of there away from. I've been there. So I, I'm talking from experience. You know what I mean? I, you know, I've, I've been uh, on like, I went to restaurants. I met women at restaurants, and within 10 and 15 minutes, I'm ready to get the fuck up out of there. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, and then you got some guys will do some stupid shit like they'll be at the bar by by themselves, and they'll see maybe one or two women at a table, and they'll buy her a drink up front. And won't even really talk to her. You know what I'm saying? They might walk over there and say, hey, I bought you the drink, blah, blah, blah. And leave. And that's it. And then if you ask them, hey, you got the phone number at least? Nope. So what What the fuck was that all about? Why the fuck would you volunteer to buy her drinks and don't really have a conversation with her and get the phone number? makes no fucking sense but it happens all the time you know what i'm saying i, I don't get it you know and, and a lot of guys be doing too goddamn much they volunteering for shit in the beginning that don't have anything to do with them but they just feel the need to get involved you know what i'm saying and a lot of married guys do this shit a lot of married guys will fucking go out and you know, they trying to skeet and skedaddle and get in quick because they know they got to go back home to their woman. And, 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 you know, I get it. I understand. But if you're a single guy, you got options. You don't got to fucking be rushing. You don't got to be moving fast like that. And a lot of women, you have to be careful. A lot of women are used to meeting married guys. And you can kind of tell because... If you're a single guy coming through the door talking to them, they'll try to treat you like you're a married guy because they'll be expecting you to do some fast shit or some random shit. 
and you be looking at them like, what the hell are you talking about? And she be looking at, because she she's already expecting you to do the same shit that a married guy would do. But when you don't do it, she'll be looking at you funny style. So be aware of that shit. So don't do too much too fast. And then you got some guys, you need to stop trying to be friends with women. This is a big one. You know, I mean, why the fuck do I want to, why do I need any more friends? I mean, I already have enough friends. I got, I got my friends that I have today and I got my old friends that I'm, that I'm con reconnecting back when I was in the Navy today. So why the fuck do I need more friends? And some guys always say, well, how do you stay out of the friend zone? Just don't act like, don't try to be friends. If you, the easiest way to stay out of the friend zone is go for the pussy. That's it. You just act like, like you're a guy that, that's want to get down with her. I mean, if you act like one of her girlfriends, yeah, you're going to be in the friend zone. Yeah, she won't take you serious. But if you act like a man, you act like, hey, you know, if you set a date with her and you just have conversation with her and be interested in what she's all about, that's acting like a man. But if you're acting like one of the girlfriends, you're going shopping together and shit, or you're going to the fucking wine bar with her, like one of the girls, or you're going to the fucking, I don't know, the flower shop together. <laughs> you know, I don't know. She might look at you like one of the girls. Or you go shopping with her at Macy's or some shit like that. She might look at you like one of the girls. I don't know, you know. But I I go for the pussy. Straight up. You know. And I, I mean, of course, I do it indirectly. You know. But I don't act like... I want to be friends when I meet any woman, unless it's something that's been discussed in advance. But that doesn't happen very often. And then the next thing is stop apologizing. Oh shit, this is a big one, man. You know, I hear all the time guys be like, oh, I apologize for this. I apologize for that. They apologize for being themselves. I've seen guys do that. They apologize because they might have said something that offended her. They apologize because he he forgot about her her birthday. I mean, and this is in the beginning. This is not months later. It, 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 he, he apologized for any goddamn thing. I mean, <laughs> I don't even accept apologies anymore I mean, because I know most people aren't really it's they're not being genuine about it it's most of the time it's bullshit so you know just stand say what you're gonna say and and be able to stand on it you know I don't I mean I say if if if, if I say something that a woman doesn't like or anybody doesn't like I say I'm sorry you know, I, that I offended you, blah, 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 whatever, you know. But I don't start apologizing for being who I am or saying what I'm saying. Because, I mean, if you don't, I mean, I, I don't beg anybody to be around me. So, and I'm not going to walk around on eggshells either. So if someone doesn't respect me as a person and who I am and what I stand for, well, they can kick rocks. No hard feelings. You know, everybody's not for everybody. That's just reality. And I talk about a lot of this shit in both of my books. So, nine times out of ten, 50% of these guys are making these mistakes I just listed. And I talk about this shit in both of my books. So, if you're having some of these problems and you're making a lot of mistakes with women and you and you can't seem to get over the hump 
and you're tired of the the frustrations and the struggle go get both of my books off amazon.com a chicken's guide to having women beg for you sex lust and lies and love can't wait and i'll put the links below and if and get into my players club i'll put that link below as well so until next time i'm out